We've got a Roma Dunze injury update and a whole lot more to discuss here on Chicago Bears Now. My name is Harrison Graham. Injury reports for both Chicago and Houston have dropped. Caleb spoke to the media. Lots to get into on this episode. Let's start with the Dunze. That, of course, was the news of the day uh, on Monday when we found out he sprained his MCL. Matt Eberflus providing some good news, saying that Roma Dunze is day-to-day. Uh, did not practice here today. We'll take a look at the full injury report in a little bit. But the fact that he's calling him day-to-day and not week-to-week is a good sign. And he, on multiple occasions, said that it's not serious. So uh, the Bears feel like they're mostly out of the woods on this one. Now, just kind of an off-the-cuff take. I still think he probably misses this game because unless he's close to 100%, is it worth risking it this early in the season? But maybe that's all. Maybe he just misses the one game, and who knows? Maybe he does play. But if I had to predict right now, he'll miss one game and come back next week just, you know, kind of reading between the flu if you will. That's kind of my Wednesday take. That could certainly change throughout the week. Also, Keenan Allen, uh, he uh, did not practice today. Uh, the Bears wanted to give him the day off as he's dealing with that heel injury. Kind of dinged it up uh, during the game a little bit as well. Came up gimpy a couple of times. And I almost am a little more concerned about this one at this point just because he's kind of had this lingering for a couple of weeks now. He is an older player at 32 years old. And, you know, when you think about the longevity of this season, you just don't want this to, you know, kind of just be there all year. But maybe it's something he's just going to have to fight through. Now, obviously, for the game at hand, you're hoping that you're not down both Keenan and Rome because then you don't have a major problem. It's only one game at the end of the day, but maybe it's not, you know, catastrophic if only one of the guys is out. Obviously, you're going to have DJ. He said he was fine uh, today. But realistically, if you're going to have a chance to win this game on Sunday, you need at least one of these two players out there, whether it's Keenan, whether it's Rome. Uh, if they're both out, that's going to be a challenge. It, it just is. That's going to be a challenge. It's already going to be a tough game on the road, big underdog, prime time. Uh, but if you're down two of your top three receivers, uh, it's going to be challenging uh, to try and win this one. Now, which wide receiver injury is a bigger concern to you? If you think it's Roma Dunze type RO, if you think it's Keenan Allen type KA, I actually think it's Allen at this point. I, I feel pretty good just listening to Flutes earlier today about where Adunze is. But if you had to pick one, let me know which one the bigger concern is. All right, let's get to the injury report in full today. We already talked about Keenan, obviously. Karan Amagaji, limited, still uh, recovering from that quad. Ryan Bates, limited as well. And by the way, just a side note, if Bates isn't 100%, if Nate Davis can't get through the whole game, that's just a problem. Th- this rotating at right guard has got to end. Just pick somebody and go. Kari game did not practice as he's dealing with the hand. Uh, slash knee injury. Adunze obviously didn't practice. Zat Pickens limited with the groin. We'll see if he returns this week. And then Demarcus Walker didn't practice with the foot issue. He played really good in the opener, so something to monitor there as he, uh, I thought, was really, really good uh, against Tennessee. All right, before we continue and get to some of Kayla Williams' comments from earlier today, shout out to Game Time for sponsoring today's show. If you want to go to a Bears game, or any other event that requires purchasing a ticket online, uh, get going with Game Time. Download the app, create an account today. Use code CHATSPORTS to get $20 off your first purchase only. I love going to watch my favorite teams play, and with Game Time's newest feature called Game Time Picks, it makes it easier to see your favorite teams play. It's going to help you filter out through the fluff of thousands of tickets and show you the best deals on the best seats uh, possible, best opportunities within those events. So whether you're getting tickets for a sporting event, concert, comedy show, or anything else, Game Time has you covered with views from the seats, super deals, which are the best bang for your buck, and last-minute tickets for the lowest prices guaranteed. So download the Game Time app today. Like I said, use that code chat sports. It's all one word. After you create your account, it's going to get you $20 off your first purchase only. It's called chat, code chat sports for $20 off. Terms apply. Download game time today. What time is it? It is game time. Link in the comments and description. 
All right, Caleb Williams looking forward after his uh, not-so-great debut, but again, like he said today, when you win the game, that's the most important thing. He talked about specifically an area he thought he could improve in, and he talked about his drop, like, you know, three-step, five-step, whatever. He said, sometimes I rush my drop a little bit, not needing to. One specific route that I th I can think of is Rome, a 10-yard route. I rush my drop and tried to juice it in there a little bit and missed, and if I'm remembering correctly, I think this was the little dig over the middle where he kind of throws it at his feet, and producer Cullen and I were like, dude, like, just relax a little. Like, you just he just felt a little out of control, and that's kind of why I'm not going to freak out because my main takeaway from him struggling in week one was not like, holy shit, he doesn't know what's going on out there. It was, he just feels a little rushed, like a little antsy, and this – Fun fact from week one, he was the quickest to throw in the NFL at just over two seconds per throw. From snap to throw, 2.05 seconds. So uh, I think that does gotta sh go to show like, hey, him seeing the field and getting rid of the ball, not really the issue. The issue is he just misfired a few times, and that was on display uh, in this game. We saw it kind of started with that first deep ball up the left sideline where Cannon clears the corner uh, in a cover two concept uh, beater, and he just airmailed one, right? Did it again on a DeAndre Carter slot fade, although that one wasn't as bad of a miss. Uh, but it kind of kept happening throughout the game. It felt like he was going to the right spots. He just wasn't connecting. So I, that's why I'm not worried. Number one, it's his first game. Like, I, I'm not going to, like, <laughs> declare anything one way or the other after a game. But number two, I thought he just missed throws. And the reason I'm not concerned is accuracy was not really a major issue for him coming out. So – it's really just clean up the technical stuff like he's talking about. Don't rush the drop too much. Now, you don't want to be super slow. That was kind of a problem with Fields at times where he's just kind of taking his time to get back in the pocket. It's like, ah, this is a fast game. You got to get back there. But you don't have to sprint either. Like, find a sweet spot. Get the footwork right. Get the mechanics right. Let it rip. We know he can do it. Give it time. Um, and if he does, I expect him to throw the ball better because him throwing the ball accurately, accurately and uh, – utilizing his arm talent was never an issue in college, wasn't really an issue in the preseason. Of course, he missed a few in the preseason, but uh, he seemed a little sharper there. Uh, first game jitters, I think, is certainly part of the explanation as well. And now go on the road as an underdog, go let it rip. And uh, let's see if the results are better this week. I think they will be. What say you, though? Will Caleb play better this week? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Give us your thoughts in the comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe. We'll be live for the game on Sunday night. Also, we'll be live tomorrow, every Thursday, 4 o'clock Central Time. We're bringing you the latest Bears news, rumors, my authentic Bears takes, analysis, opinion, and reaction to everything going on around this football team. So rock with us. Appreciate the 100,000 strong. Let's keep it rolling. Let's get to 101,000 subscribers. Congrats to Tyreek Stevenson as he was named NFC Defensive Player of the Week uh, this week and uh, certainly well-deserved. And it wasn't a perfect performance, but it was a damn good one. We always know he's a willing tackler. A couple of breakups, had the pick six. Did give up the touchdown in the first half, but he was in great position. So if he just, you know, locates the football, that could have been a second pick, if we're being completely honest. But it just had me thinking, I really like – the different type of corners this team has with their three starters. Like Jalen Johnson, he's just your sticky shutdown guy, right? Like teams don't throw at him much. Uh, Tyreek Stevenson, he's more the aggressive type, right? Like he is going to take some chances, try to take the ball away. He's a hard-hitting corner. He's going to get beat some, but he's kind of that, you know, Trayvon Diggs style, but better tackler type. I'm not saying he's a better overall corner than Diggs, but – He's going to take some chances, try and get some picks. And then Kyler Gordon does a little bit of everything. He blitzes from the nickel spot. He's a hard hitter, plays against the run, but he can also cover as well. It's a well-rounded room. Like, if this trio stays healthy all year, um, I, I expect it to be one of, if not the best, in the NFL. The Bears secondary as a whole, uh, according to – I can't remember what the advanced measurement was – but was the second best in the league in week one. Like, the secondary was flying around, doing some really good things. So, I feel really good about that group, and uh, you guys should too as uh, we get going early in the season. One last piece of news as we get out of here. Give me a follow on Instagram, at HGramNFL. Bears rocking the orange jerseys on Sunday night. I know people don't love the orange. I personally like them. And remember, 
Thursday night football last year. Did I say Thursday for this week? Sunday this week, but Thursday last year. Bears kicked the commander's ass in the orange jersey. So who knows? Maybe they go to Houston and do the same thing. All right, that's going to do it for Chicago Bears now. Like I said, hit me up on IG, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you guys soon. Bear down.